Okay, everybody is talking about Keefe D. Everybody's got an opinion now when it comes to Keefe D. But I spoke on this in the past. And I talked about how he ratted on himself. What is up with these older dudes, man, that's getting on social media, snitching on themselves regarding things that were done 20 and 40 years ago? Keefe D should have been enjoying his family. If he's got grandkids, enjoying his grandkids. This conversation should have never come up regarding Tupac. Now, I completely understand that if he's interviewed, um, there are some interviewers that's going to ask him about that. Um, he can give a brief uh, comment on it. Does not really have to get into details. Um, if they ask him detail things about what could have or allegedly occurred, um, he can always say like, well, hey, man, you know, that's in the past. I don't talk about it. It's over with. I don't know nothing about that. But when you start getting into details about a crime and you putting yourself there at the crime scene. We talk about young men or young rappers that do mess like that. They get on camera with money and with drugs and firearms. And then they wonder why they're arrested. They're wondering who snitched on them when in reality they snitched on themselves when all they had to do was keep their mouth closed. That's all KVD should have done. But you have old fools that's miserable. Their life is miserable. And in some aspects, this is their way of trying to keep from Agent. They think that if they remain in the hip hop game, if they make it appear that they are a thug, that I used to be a thug and this is how I am, I'm from the streets. Well, guess what? If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So now this man in his 50s, his life is basically over. And listen, he's not going down by himself. You watch anybody else that 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 he feels that is a part of that. He's going to snitch on them. So y'all talked about Takashi 69 and you're talking about snitching and all this. Keefe D is going to snitch. And don't be surprised if P. Diddy's name is brought up. But of course, he's got to have some evidence. And if they can trace that million dollars back to P. Diddy, then his life is just about over as well. Right? But I just can't seem to understand why all of these old dudes, man, that's close to their senior years are ratting on themselves. Fransone, this uh, mafia dude, this ex-mafia dude, and even Vlad TV, he had some mafia dudes get on there. He interviewed them. And they were very careful as to what to say. Vlad questioned them on things. And Vlad was also careful as to what he asked them. And they responded. And they only spoke on very uh, surface things, man. They didn't go into depth. They was very quick with the answer. You know, they might might have spoke around it, but they didn't get on there and snitch on themselves. They weren't thinking, well, uh, the limit of statutation, the state that's the statute of limitation is up now. And I made an agreement that I can't be touched. So now I'm just going to tell it all. I'm going to put it in a book and you can read the book. Right. And I'm just going to tell on everybody, including myself. And I think it's real. I think it's quite interesting that everyone that was around Keefe D that was a part of this thing is dead. Every single one of them is dead except for Keefe D. So now he's going to go down for all of them. Although the rest of them are in hell. Right. 
But he's going to go down for all of them now. They're dead. He's the only living one alive. And not only did he get on there and stitch on himself, but he had evidence in his house. He kept it in his house while he put it in a book. He put it in the book. So I can't understand this generation. And I just can't talk about this generation. But even these old dudes, man, that did things in their past, they want to stay relevant. So now they snitching on themselves. Make sense of that. I just can't seem to figure out why they just can't just enjoy your senior years. Much of what y'all black dudes are going through is preventable. It all depends upon the choices you make and how you live your life. If you want to continue living your life like you some 20 year old thug or gangbanger, how do you think your end is going to be? You live by the sword, you buy, die by the sword. And I have a saying, you play on the devil's playground and one day the devil will show up. Keep it D, the devil just showed up. And this is not your end because I'm sure there's somebody behind bars that may try to get revenge for the death of Tupac. I'm sure that that might happen. But he's too old, man, to be, to be going to jail, man, for something he did like 40 some odd years ago. Because you chose to get on a camera and snitch on yourself. Not realizing that the book you wrote, the feds are reading it. Oh, that's what he did? He was there? And he's given a description on Tupac breakdancing? And how he saw a round hit dude's head? Oh, we got him. And all they had to do was just sit back and just wait. And you gave them enough ammunition to hang yourself. Right? So I don't understand it. These old dudes out there, I see these, these dudes, these old dudes, man, in their in they 40s and 50s on the internet beefing with one another. Attacking these young cats, man. It makes no sense to me. But... Hey, brothers, we already have a bad image out there to the world. The world already thinks negative of us. And there's very few out there that have hope in us and try to support us, whether they're sincere or not. But we keep giving them ammunition against us. Even our own so-called women have no hope in us at all. To the point where they are turning to the slave master's children. Of course, the black women have always been raised by the slave master's child. She always was submissive to the system, the government. When they first kicked black men out of the house and she decided to take on the government as her husband, as her daddy, as her provider, brothers, that's when we should have, we should have stood up, we should have bettered ourselves, become, um, take advantage of the educational system here that many immigrants are coming here. To get, I mean, they're crossing the borders illegally just to get what you got. And now they're exceeding you because you're now at the very bottom still with your hands out. Listen, I agree with reparations. I support reparations. 
And you're going to have the naysayers say, well, you know, my ancestors were enslaved. And what about these people that were enslaved? But reparations, in my opinion, is not really for slavery itself, but for the damage that was done. We're living the results of yesterday, today. What we see now in the so-called black community, the division, the self-hate, that's all the result of yesterday that we're living today. So when it comes to not knowing our ancestry, having to pay money to track our ancestry, when it comes to not knowing our foreparents, our real name, we took on the slave master's name. Right. And our religion, our identity, our right to even be a human. There's a lot of damage emotionally, psychological and physical damage that we had to endure. And we still endure it to today. With racist police, this whole system of racism that's cloaked in the Democratic Party. And that's another uh, uh, PTSD issue there because black Americans can't even see the harm that's being done to them through the Democratic Party. You think the Democrats are for you, but they are strongly against you. And they've proven that to you over and over and over and over and over again. And you still support them. You still do their biddings, their protests. So look at all of these so-called black politicians that's in position of authority. They're not out there vouching for you. They're not fighting for you, black Americans. They're vouching and supporting the illegal immigrants coming over the border. Look at what's happening in New York City. That mayor is not for black people. It's not for New Yorkers. They're making sure these illegal immigrants have a place to stay in your hood. Sopping up your resources, what little resources you have. Black women, you gave up your men for the government and now the government is putting others in your community to also compete with the little resources, the crumbs that they're giving you. And you're still defending them. You turn your backs on your own children slash abortions. So the so-called black community, the American black people are in trouble. And I had a conversation yesterday with a young lady and I was telling her the reason why you see so many black men going to other races is not because of the fact that they're so submissive. They have not, in many cases, in most cases, have not lost their femininity. I hate when I hear a so-called black female, bro, yo, bro, what's up, bro? Like, that's something you hear a dude saying it. But you hear more black females saying it. And I'm going to say this before I end the video. Brothers, if you go on a profile, don't, mat don't matter if it's Instagram, if it's TikTok, Facebook, or even YouTube. And on their profile, if you see the image of a rainbow, get far away from them. Because their spirit ain't right and they are not for you. They are not fit or worthy to raise your child, if you are a decent individual. A real man would not want someone rocking the rainbow to raise their child, especially their daughters, to convert them to be like her. So watch out for these females that have rainbows on their profile. You get far away from them. Because that's a symbol of what's really within. So feedback, tell me what you think, subscribe, click on the Cash App, support this channel. Until next time. I'm fearless.